Replacing Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas, it's not going to be easy. So how does Florida State plan on doing it in fall of 2022? We're talking about that today on Warchant TV. This is Tom Lang, the director of original content with Warchant TV and Warchant.com, and we are breaking down every position group in May, Florida State's offense and defense. So today we're talking about the defensive ends and how Florida State attacks the problem of two key departures to the next level. Please make sure to hit the thumbs up underneath this video and subscribe to our channel, the thumbs up help us find more FSU fans who don't know about us at Warchant TV and if you subscribe you're going to help yourself out because you'll have our content on the homepage of your YouTube app and on youtube.com. We can't thank you enough everybody for your support. Florida State found some portal magic last year with future first round draft pick Jermaine Johnson and South Carolina transfer and lifelong Noel enthusiast Keir Thomas but they're gone now. So how does Florida State attend to the problem? Let's start with the true freshman on the roster that participated in spring. Number 57 in your program is Aaron Hester, a six foot two, two hundred and thirty seven pound freshman from Fletcher in Jacksonville, Florida? Continue the trend. You've heard this a lot on these position previews. Florida State hit in their evaluations again. He has natural instincts to get to the quarterback. He won some one on one battles against some named tackles some important players in Florida State's offensive line rotation already. Was he a consistent force? No. But did he have multiple days across several weeks of spring camp in which he stood out? Yes, he did. Combine some of those raw skills with development in the strength room and position development with coach John Papuchas, and Florida State likely has a player in the next year or two at the position. Another true freshman who was a preferred walk-on, yet he was also a four-star rivals prospect, is number 96 Dante Anderson. Six foot three, 231 pounds out of Homestead in Miami. If this is the type of player you're going to bring in as a preferred walk-on, you're doing your job as a position coach here at Florida State. Anderson's raw, there's no doubt about that, but he also has the athleticism and quick twitch that's hard to find, especially with somebody who arrives on campus as a non-full scholarship player. Now we turn to a trio of redshirt freshmen who better get their acts together soon or else Anderson and Hester will run them down. We're talking George Wilson, Byron Turner, and Patrick Payton. George Wilson wears number 52 at six foot four, two hundred. 15 pounds, has some more important camps ahead of him. Every once in a while you notice George Wilson this spring, but again he's probably more of a long-term project player. Byron Turner is somebody who was held out in fall camp last year. Mike Norvell noted that that was a big loss because they think that Turner can contribute sooner than later. 6'4", 234 out of Port Sulphur, Louisiana. This redshirt freshman has, at least in my mind, out of the trio we mentioned, a lot of skills. And then Patrick Payton, 6'5", 247 out of Miami Northwestern. Another player who could crack the rotation this fall. He was not held out last fall camp. We'll see if he can make any noise in July and August and make the decisions all the harder for the coaching staff. The gray beard of this position group is Leonard Warner III. He's been at Florida State for an awfully long time. He's gotten bigger. Six foot four, 261 pounds, formerly a true linebacker. He's now playing defensive end. Warner is somebody who will help this segment group by raising the floor. He's often in the right position. He's not always the most gifted and quick twitch player in the group, but Warner can be a steadying force and is strong against the run. He is absolutely somebody who figures to be in the rotation this fall. Perhaps the most intriguing player, at least for this particular season, is Dennis Briggs Jr. Former defensive end, converted to tackle, back to end. He's listed at 6'4", 282 as Florida State enters the summer. Briggs could be the answer to the Keir Thomas question. You need that bigger body. You gotta have some variety on the edges between speed guys and strength guys. Well, at 282 pounds, Dennis Briggs can certainly bring the strength. We didn't get to evaluate a whole ton of reps from Briggs in spring, so we'll be looking to see what he looks like in the fall, not only at the position, but size-wise. Is 282 far too large for Florida State, or do they want to keep him as a bigger run-stopping presence? We shall see. Now to the guys who figure to be getting into the backfield and disrupting plays the most. Derek McClendon the second, 6'4", 240 pounds, a redshirt sophomore who came out blazing in spring camp. McClendon dominated early on. There were some lulls in the middle of camp, especially when Bless Harris was rotated in at tackle, but he did finish nine nicely, and he has a lot more moves, it would appear, this season than last year. Don't know if that's attributed to just working with John Papuchas, learning from Jermaine Johnson, but whatever the case, Derek McClendon's stock went from a giant question mark to, looks like he's going to be a consistent contributor for Florida State at the defensive end position. And finally, the number one name that everybody wants to talk about on the defensive line, maybe even on the whole team, and that's Jared Verse. Redshirt sophomore out of Albany, 6'4", 251, he looks the part. There were times he was absolutely dominant in camp, but he's kind of a weird player so far, and this is to be expected from a player that's stepping up a level. Some days, Verse would be perfect in terms of his leverage and not getting tricked and outflanked. Other days, he'd freelance. So we'll see if the step up 
in the level of competition this year is something that takes some time and some games before he gets up to speed, but the athleticism in there, and also so is the swagger versus not afraid to chirp at an offense. So if he makes plays, look for him to get under the skin of Florida State's opponents this fall. Jared Verse is a day one starter for Florida State, and with three years of eligibility remaining, Florida State looks to make the Jared Verse story another successful chapter in dipping into the transfer portal in order to crank out another NFL prospect with a successful run in Tallahassee. What does all of this add up to at the defensive line position for FSU? Not as much production as what Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas brought to the table. That's just totally unfair to expect. But it looks like Florida State has pieces and variety at defensive end that it can throw at multiple problems. If it's a run first offense, they've got enough players who seem big enough at the position to hold up against that challenge. And they look like they've got enough fast players too, speedy defensive ends who can make plays and be dynamic in the backfield to affect a quarterback in a pass first offense or in pass obvious situations. We'll see what development looks like in fall camp. And that's why you come to us at Warchan TV. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. We're going to keep you posted on all position groups between now and kickoff with Duquesne on August the 27th. We hope you enjoyed this video on Warchan TV and remember to come back to us. We've got live programming one o'clock every weekday with the Jeff Cameron Show and Seminole Headlines. We got Wake Up Warchant with Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark live right on this channel once a week. We've got recruiting chats with Michael Langson, Sunday Smash programming, and more. It's all dedicated to FSU sports. So if you're an old, you need to lock it in with us. Subscribe to our channel. It's completely free. Thanks for tuning into Warchant TV, and we will talk to you next time.